Hey everybody, I want to thank you for being on here with me and uh, and coming out to visit. Uh, I'm Pastor Jim Rivera. This is my first time trying this, so <laughs> I'll be a little bit embarrassed and, and uh, I'll try to do well. But uh, on Wednesday nights at City Limits Assembly of God, we have a time now that we've been doing for a couple of months called that called our table talk time and the whole point of it is is to try to teach teach our brothers and sisters how to have a devotion how to spend time in the word of god how to try to extract something from the word and then how to have it apply to your life also to be able to see it in context in today's life and living so uh thank you cindy and bruce i see you guys watching thank you so much please feel free to shoot in any questions or comments or whatever but uh what i wanted to do was to share with you that that the whole meaning of table talk, right, of this type of a Bible study, come into church on Wednesday nights at City Limits, and we set up all these tables, and then sit uh, different people around them, and I hand out notes on the topic, on on maybe key words, on things that you might find in that portion of Bible study for that night, so that we can then talk about it, and we can uh, kind of experience it. Not just a quick reading and, okay, I did my devotions, but really learning how to take time and delve into the Word of God, search into the Word of God and get the meat from it. So uh, I'm just excited about this tonight. Uh, found a portion of Scripture that is really interesting to me, and so I wanted to share with you. It's at Matthew chapter 20, verses 1 through 16. I know that sounds like a lot of verses, but I want to tell the whole story, and then I want us to take a look at it and find, and listen, we could probably read this a thousand years and and preach thousands of sermons on it, but but it's what we'll get tonight. So before we start, you know, first time doing this, and thank you, Lord. Uh, let's just pray, and uh, pray uh, table talk, okay, at Wednesday nights on uh, at City Limits. If you want to come on days that it's not icy outside and stormy, it's okay to come, and uh, tonight we canceled service. I didn't want anybody to get hurt. I didn't want anybody uh, going down there slipping on any ice or anything. Hope that you understand. Thank you so much. Father in heaven, let's pray. Father in heaven, we pray that you would give us a sweet evening, Lord. As I breathe in now, Lord God, I just pray that the breath of the Spirit of God is going to be upon me and everyone watching, that they would sense a calmness, Lord. I don't want to seem anxious, Lord, but I want your presence to be with us, Lord, as we look at this scripture. With the technology of today, it, it can make you feel like you almost have to perform for the camera, and, and that's not what I want to do. I want us to get our Bibles out, to take a look at them, to see what your word says, O oh God, and minister minister to our hearts lord god show us something in this chapter tonight that will be applicable to us that we could use for us that we could put into our hearts into our souls into our daily walk into our life into our tonight into our tomorrow father we take a moment to pray i just i received a call a few moments ago from pastor beverly that uh, Kinsley, uh, her great-granddaughter, is going to be uh, released. Thank you. Thank you, Lord, for Jules and for Nick. Thank you for taking care of them. We pray uh, for Hal, and we pray for a, a Jackie Ng. Their uh, uh, Hal's sister passed away, and, 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 and she lost her battle with cancer. And So we pray for the Ng family, that you would be with Hal and Jackie and all the family in New York. Be with all of them. And just bless them, keep them safe, and 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 always keep them covered. I pray for my friend Charlie on my board. He's just a he's a rock. He's my hero. He's he's just like he's 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 just uh, he's hurting, and he's he just he, he's a fighter. And uh, I pray for any of you out there that might have a need that God would minister to you and would touch your hearts. I pray for Noha, and I pray for. Uh, all the people at our church, Lord God, that you know who they are and you know our needs. If you have a need now, just, just give that need up to the Lord. And and we are just going to say, Lord Jesus, we pray in your holy name.
by the power of the Holy Spirit that you would hear our prayer tonight. Hear our prayer. Minister to our need, Lord God. Sometimes what we ask for is not what we need. So give us, Lord, what we need. But give us that, that sense of peace and joy in our heart of knowing that all things are done by you so that you can bless us, so that we may glorify you. Father, thank you, Lord. We pray for our families, our brothers, our sisters, mothers, our fathers, aunts and uncles. We pray for the lost world, Lord God, that, that you would just be with it, Lord God. And just it seems that this is trying times, Lord, with all the technology and, and all the children are, are just paying so much, so much of their attention to those digital things in the world and not paying attention to the relationships, Lord. We pray for our married couples that you'd be with them, for our singles that you'd keep them strong, Lord God. And, and, and Lord, for those that have made a decision that they aren't going to be married, that Father, thank you, Lord, then use them and, and use them. They will be stronger. Thank you, Father. So now, Father, we give this time to you. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. God bless you. Tonight, I want to, uh, I'm going to put my funny glasses on, and I want to read from my gigantic Bible to you, Matthew chapter 20. Now, as we go through, I'd like you to just, just take some time, get a little pencil and paper, and, and write down some notes. I do the same thing. I do the exact same thing, you know, and uh, write down some notes, some thoughts that might come to your mind some words maybe if you see a word and it's doubled up and it's got I mean it goes on and on and it's mentioned again you know you know different things maybe it's a word that you don't know and a challenge that we have at our Wednesday night table talks at city limits is if you don't know a word I circle it and I put a WS I put a word study and you study that word and you find out what it means I look it up in several different dictionaries you know and and find out exactly what that means you know there's a, if I could encourage you, there's nothing better than having a good dictionary. You want a good dictionary to find out exactly what words mean. Words have power. And uh, something that we've noticed is, is that you can say a word and some people don't understand it. Uh, I recall saying a submit, a submit or submission to, to, uh, uh, to a few people. And they thought, well, you know, that, that means that to tap out. You know, that means that I'm weak. That means that I'm not strong. That means that I lost, you know, but to submit, you know, tear the word down to sub is to come under, to come under the mission, submission, to, uh, to come under the mission. I want you to imagine if I came under your mission, you and I supported you, and then you in turn reciprocate and you support me, then I support you, then you support me. It's a never ending love of the brethren. It's, it's us caring for each other. So let's uh, let's move on. And uh, these are the glasses I found tonight. So these are the ones I'm going to wear. We read in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Please read in your version and feel free to write in your Bible. God won't get mad at that. For the kingdom of heaven is like a master of a house who went out early in the morning. early in the morning to hire laborers for his vineyard. After agreeing with the laborers for a denarius a day, he sent them into the vineyard. And going about the third hour of the day, he saw others standing idle, standing idle in the marketplace. And to them, he said, you go into the vineyard too. And whatever is right, I will give you. I, I, I love that line. So I don't know if you're underlining that, but, but whatever is right, I will give you. So they went. And going out again about the sixth hour and the ninth hour, he did the same. And about the eleventh hour, that's pretty much the, you know, I mean, it's sundown. There's no harvesting being done at that point. And about the eleventh hour, he went out and he found others standing and he said to them, why do you stand here idle all day? Question. And they said to him, because no one has hired us. Because no one has hired us. You know, sometimes there's no, 
there's no laborers in the vineyard because they just haven't been asked, you know, because no one has hired us. Uh, so he said to them, so you go into the vineyard too. And when evening came, the owner of the vineyard said to his foreman, call the laborers and pay them their wages. The wage, wages, wages, what you've worked for and what the value of what you worked for is worth. So they would give you that, they would give you your wage, pay them their wages, uh, beginning with the last up to the first. I love that. Beginning with the last up to the first. How incredible is that? And when those hired about the 11th hour came, each of them received a denarius. Now when those hired first came, they thought that they would receive more, but each of them also received a denarius. And on receiving it, they grumbled at the master of the house. On receiving it, they grumbled at the master of the house, saying, saying, these last, they worked only one hour, and you have made them equal to us who have borne the burden, borne the burden of the day and the scorching heat. Who have borne the burden of the day and the scorching heat. But he replied to one of them, friend, I am doing you no wrong. Did you not agree for me to work for one denarius? Take what belongs to you and go. I choose to give to this last worker as I give to you. Am I not allowed to do what I choose with what belongs to me? Or do you begrudge me my generosity? So the last will be first and the first will be last. That's incredible, isn't it? And I want, you to, I want you to take a few minutes and think. Now, Father in heaven, we pray again that you will open our, our minds, Father. Some of us out there may feel that, that maybe we, we, because of what we've done in our life, uh, can't uh, remember well. Maybe we uh, read something and I forget. But, uh, but your spirit brings things to remembrance to us. So right now we pray for Matthew chapter 21 through 16. And we pray that what we've read, you will begin to imprint in our heart and mind, begin to show us the things that are there that, that may be of importance to us today. And we thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. So I, I just, I, I simply wanted to share with you so what are some of the things, if you could tell me, and feel free to type in there and to uh, mention something. You know, one of the things that came to me was, you know, that uh, it's like the kingdom of heaven. As you begin in the first verse, it says here, for the kingdom of heaven is like a master of a house who went out early in the morning and hired laborers for his vineyard. So this is what the kingdom of heaven is like. The kingdom of heaven is like a master who's going out trying to hire his laborers. And uh, when I thought about that, I think, okay, so so God is going out and he's getting us to to go out and to work for him and to work in his vineyard because, because the uh, fruit is ready uh, to be harvested or whatever, or the field to be plowed or for it to be picked or whatever it might be. And, and when I began to think about that, I see how he gave the one... Uh, he made an, a, a deal with the ones that started very early in the day. And I couldn't help but think that those that started early in the day, it was probably hot. It says that, I believe, in verses 10 and 11. It was hot. It was, uh, it was very hot. It was very hot. It probably was uh, very laborious. It probably was hard to be out there and work in the heat all day long. But they agreed to that. They agreed to that. And uh, I wanted you to take a look in there and see if if you don't see it. And then it says, and he went on and on. And one of my, uh, one that really touched me was that he says, and about the 11th hour, he went out and found others standing. And he said to them, 
why do you stand here idle all day? And they said to him in verse 7, because no one has hired us. I want you to imagine that. So, so, so it seemed to me or, 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 or to me, uh, you could be getting something different and that's fine. But it occurred to me that these people were standing in the marketplace idly, just, just standing around uh, kind of waiting for somebody to give them an opportunity to do something, an opportunity to use their gift or to be a blessing or to do something and they got nothing. And the marketplace is kind of a gathering place and all these people here. And this is where he got them from. He got them in the marketplace, not in the pews, not the people that come to the church, but out in the highways and byways, on the streets, in the area that people are and where they come together. And um, it just it touched my heart that they said, and no one hired us. And I wondered, I wonder why they weren't hired. Is it that they were old? Is it that they were feeble? Is it that they were crippled? Is it that they looked like maybe they couldn't work in the field, so they weren't asked to go into the field? And uh, all kinds of things came to my mind, but they were worldly things. They were things in how a man would view them. Well, this guy's too old. This guy couldn't stand the heat, you know. So they have reasons for not asking. But here we see a, a, just a glimpse of our Lord and of his vineyard and of his work. He did not see these people for maybe not being, not having any ability. He saw them as being wonderful people. He said, you're able, go into the vineyard and work. Even at the 11th hour, even at the last, last moment in the final season of their life, if you will. And he told them to go out there and to, and to go and to work in his vineyard. And, uh, what a wonderful piece there, he said. And, and when he had hired them, about at the 11th hour, each one of them came. No one has hired us. Uh, they thought that they would, they thought, I'm, I'm so sorry, call laborers and pay them their wages. So then I want to go to verse 8 for a second. And when evening came, evening is sundown, there's no more time. The light has gone out. There's... Um, no more time to go and harvest or to plow or to plant or to seed. It's just, it's basically over. He say, and when evening came, when that sun came down, when evening came, when it's time to stop all work. And I found it very interesting that uh, he says, and when evening came, the owner of the vineyard said to the foreman, said to the foreman, call the laborers. And pay them their wages, beginning with the last up to the first. And I've always wondered why why in the word of God it says that he did it that way. The last shall be first. I think it's because they were closer to the end. They were closer to the last moment. They made it in just by the skin of their teeth, you know. But if you look at it, you know, uh, they began to get paid. And I think what, what's happening here is that God is trying to reveal to you and I why are we doing what we're doing? Why are some people saved? Could it be that some people look like they're saved and serving God, but they're really not? You know, and uh, here I'll, I'll, I'll show you what I mean and certainly chime in and let me know. I'm reading some of you. It's good to see you here, Christina. And uh, uh, Joselinda, yes, and Layla, thank you for watching. May God's blessing be with you and all the kids. Uh, I miss your rice and beans. That woman can throw down. She can burn. So, so anyway, here, I, I want you to look at this here. And when, and when those hired at the 11th hour came, each one of them, they received a denarii. And then take a look at verses 10 and 11. Verse 10 and 11, circle those I circle those in this chapter and write the date down, by the way. So any other time that we do this, or maybe I'll preach from it, you'll know exactly where we were. It says, now when those hired came first, they thought they would receive more. But each of them, them also, they received only a denarii. Look at verse 10. Now when those hired first, 
came, they thought they would receive more, but each of them also, also, also have received a denarii. On receiving it, verse 11, on receiving it, they grumbled at the master of the house. Now, it says up here in verse 8 and 9 that the master told his foreman. He told his foreman, I'm sorry if you feel so, he told his foreman to, uh, to make sure that he went and he paid them. But they didn't grumble to the foreman. They grumbled at the master of the house. I want you to look at that. Now, when those hired came, they thought, and then verse 11, and on receiving it, they grumbled at the master of the house. Verse 12 tells you what they were grumbling about, saying, saying, these last worked only one hour. Now they're comparing themselves to what the other did. Now, 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 now I'm going to compare myself. Isn't that just what men and women do? We want to, because that's how the world thinks. We want to compare ourselves. Well, take a look at what I did. Take a look at all the work I've done. Take a look at all the ministry I did. And you're going to give this guy the same that you gave me? And you're going to honor him the same that you honor me? Oh, tell me. Isn't God wonderful? Are you getting it? Isn't God wonderful? And they grumbled. And on receiving it, they grumbled at the master of the house saying, These last worked only one hour and you have made them equal. You have made them equal. I love that. Equal to us. You've made them equal to us who have borne the burden of the day and the scorching heat. You made these people who worked only an hour, you made them equal to us who carried the burden of the day plowed, did whatever had to be done in the field. We worked there all day, the scorching heat. You made these people equal to us. It's, it's as though they're telling the father, the master, how dare you? How dare you make them equal to us? Are you learning anything about God's grace and love though tonight? God's grace and love is that he doesn't care when you come, but that you come. Take a look at this. Verse 12, it says, saying that these last worked only one hour and you have made them equal to us who have borne the burden of the day in the scorching heat. But he replied to one of them, friend, I am doing you no wrong. I'm not doing you any wrong. Did you not agree with me for a denarii? Isn't that what you agreed to? And it seems that the master of the vineyard tells him, isn't isn't just one denarii? Isn't that exactly what you agreed to? I may have hired you this morning when the sun came up, but you agreed to one denarii. And now you want to change the rules because uh, you see that somebody who came last or just one hour ago and did so little gets the exact same blessing or payment or wage as you. You follow me? Blessing payment, or wage. You following that? A wonderful piece here. It says, but he replied to one of them, friend, uh, friend, friend, friend. Isn't that incredible? He says, friend, I am doing you no wrong. I've done you no wrong. Did you not agree with me to work for a denarii? Take what belongs to you and go. Man, that, that, that almost sounds like, like uh, <laughs> take what belongs to you and go. Have you ever maybe been in a relationship? I have, I know. That it may come to an end. And when it, I, I keep getting a little message here, but that's okay. When it comes to an end, it's a, you know, there's, there's no real, real way to fix this. So, Take what belongs to you and just go. You're out of here. You know, take what belongs to you and go. And and just in my mind, I want to just share my, my thought in my heart with you. I think it's like he's showing very clearly that these that came 
they came for what they could get. You see, we sometimes think if we labor hard and we labor long, then we are supposed to get more. Because that's how this world teaches us. If you work hard, then you'll get ahead. If you work hard, then you can save. If you work hard, then you can take and accumulate things and you can put them away and do what you need to with them. And we live in that kind of a world. So we then begin to think in that same way that I am worthy of all I did. I'm worthy of so much more because I did so much more because I did so much more. But that's not what we agreed upon. And, and, and I just want to share with you what are some of the takeaways from this chapter? Just, just, just start. And I know that we've not delved into the whole thing. And certainly we could go deeper. And, and I'd love you to. Uh, a part of table talk is that you talk about it, that you read it, find it in a couple of different versions, get yourself a dictionary, and, and then look it up and, and, and find out uh, different words and what they mean. Pages, uh, he keeps saying wage. And a denarii. A denarii. What's a denarii? Find that out. Find that out. Find out what is a denarii? A day's wage. Uh, what is a denarii? You know, find out uh, the word wage. What does it truly mean? You know, uh, you know, labor. Plowing in the labor. Working in labor. Scorching heat. What does it mean? And, and to me, it makes me think of the people who say, you know, you know what? After reading this and realizing I'm going to get the same as you in the end, maybe I'll be like the prodigal son. Maybe I'll be like the prodigal son and I'll take everything I have and I'll just go squander it. I'm going to go live hard. I'm going to live rough. I'm going to do what I want. I'm going to enjoy the pleasures of this world. I'm going to enjoy them all. I'm, 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 I'm just going to enjoy life. You know, I only live once. You know, I'm just going to enjoy it. You know, and then on my sick bed at the 11th hour, I'm going to accept Jesus and I'm going to get all this. And honestly, I would have to tell you that this proves that that's the way God is. God is that way. God shows his grace equal from one to another. I could be serving him 80 years of my life or just have accepted Jesus on my deathbed and I will get the wage of one that has been saved by the mercy and grace of God. But here's the thing. We think in the way of the world, I've not accumulated, I'm worth more, I have more value. But what is the guy that except Jesus on his deathbed missing? I'll tell you. I've been saved now going on 36 years. What I have experienced in my life, even through the bad times, the suffering times, the times when things didn't add up, they didn't go the way I thought they would, even being a child of God and a pastor, things went wrong, things went terribly wrong, things didn't add up, I, I had needs, I had issues come up in health, different things happened, people I loved hurt me, I hurt people who I loved, you know, and, and on and on it goes, and, and, uh, but I have something that those don't have, you see, People who think that way think the blessing comes after you die or at the end or at the 11th hour, at the final hour. When he comes back, says he's coming like a thief in the night and, and then we get our blessing. If you think that way, then you're thinking wrong. You see, you see, I may have been serving 35 years plowing the field the scorching heat, it's rained on me, it's shined on me, I've gotten flat tires, I've ran out of food, I've ran out of bill money, all that. But I've had Jesus through all that. I've had the presence of my Lord with me through those painful moments, through those painful times. So it's not as though I was robbed. When you're looking at the gift of God is only coming to you at the end 
at the end, at the last day, when he comes back, then you miss the blessing that he is with you every day. He's a friend that sticks closer than a brother. He's been with you all the time. Even when we think like, man, I don't feel like God is close. Yes, he is. It's the fact that I know God that I can feel that joy. It's the fact that I know God that I made it through that trial. It's the fact that I know God that I made it through that tribulation. It's the fact that I know God that I got fired from that job and God got me out of a situation that maybe I had no clue horrible things might have happened. So God is with us and we need to remember that and be not like those in the world who are adding and subtracting in worldly terms, thinking, well, well, you know, if I'm going to get the same thing at the end, well, then I'll just wait till the end. Are you kidding me? A life lived for God. And I lived one for the devil, half, half through almost. And, 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 and uh, that's what I had was pain, suffering, and no hope at the end of every night. Sometimes hundreds of times per day, zero hope, thinking nothing could save me, nothing could help me. But after I met Jesus and I formed a relationship with him, it's not the blessing I'm going to receive on that final day, but it's all the blessings I've received till that final day as well. It's not sometimes our concept it's like someday on the by and by, someday when this whole world is over, I'll be with him. Someday when this all ends, I'll finally be with him. No, 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 no. It's listen, I've made it through all this. I've made it through all the trials, struggles, and troubles because he is. Because he lives, I can face tomorrow. Because he lives, I've made it through. Because he lives in, in difficult situations, I found a smile on my face. Because he lives in situations where I could have been in trouble, I bit my tongue. Because he lives, I've seen miracles happen in my life through prayer, through the power of God and the power of the Holy Spirit. So, taking from this chapter, he goes out, uh, it's like the kingdom of God. We think, well, in the end, yes, we're going to be saved. We're going to have eternal life and be with our master. Now, I know that some of you, if not some of you, there might be some of you thinking, well, there's crowns and jewels for those that have done wonderful, powerful things here. Yes, but not for people who have done them with the agenda that, boom, whoop, that's a crown for me. Check that out. Boom. There's a crown for me. Check that off. I did that. Check that crown. Off. If you're counting what you're getting, you're probably not going to get it. It's for those who love God so much. And in that love, in that love, they've done outstanding things that those things are going to become a wonderful source for you. I don't know what that is. Some people say crowns, pearls, this, that, whatever. I, I don't know. I'll find out when I get there. But, but you know, uh, hey, uh, Bruce, I'm with you, he says, and because he gives me glory, glory. Thank you, brother, because he gives me the opportunity to shine his name. Because for 35 plus years, I've been saying the name of Jesus. I've been saying that Jesus is the way. Jesus is the life. Jesus is the answer. Jesus is the hope. People die and pass away. Some people have no hope, but we have hope. We Yes, we are blessed, Wurma. We are blessed people. We are blessed. Why? Because of our intimacy with God. Because of the relationship that we have with our Lord. And, and uh, please remember this. Let's not try and nickel and dime with God. Let's not nickel and dime with him. This is a life. It's a walk with him. It's an everyday walk. Is it easy? No. Not because God is hard. It's not easy because this world is hard. Somebody say amen. 
It's not, uh, listen, when you look at the, I look at my walk in serving God. Is it easy to get up every day and pray? Is it easy to take time out and get in the Bible when I could probably start rushing and doing things? Is it easy to love my neighbor? Is it easy to love people that despitefully use you? Is it easy to forgive people after they have hurt you so bad? No, no, it's not. But it's because of God that I can do that. And there is the blessing. There's fruit right there. It's when God's love gets me through those things. God's love, he gets me around those things. God's love, he propels me. And listen, the greatest thing is, he's here saying, then he saw others standing idle. I just want to add something to this. Others standing idle. Others that were looking around. Hey, we need to be those people that when we see people idly standing around, hey, what are you doing? What are you doing with your life? What is your life amounting to? What are you doing? It's time to serve God. Don't sit idly around uh, waiting for, uh, for the denarii of this world, waiting for the little things of this world. God's got a work for us to do. Not all will be pastors, not all teachers, not all prophets, not all priests, not all kings, not all millionaires. But we can all be blessed and we can all give God glory. We can all give God glory because God is, he's trying to tell us, listen, in this story, he goes out and he finds them in the morning. He makes a bargain, a deal. I'll give you a denarii, a wage. I'll give you, I'll give you a, a, a something worth of value for what you're doing. But then he goes out all that day. And I think that the story is not really in the amount that he's giving us, but how much he goes out. It's showing, it's showing the grace of God that God goes and goes and goes and goes. And it doesn't matter where he finds you. doesn't matter when he finds you. doesn't matter what condition he finds you in. He wants you. He wants you to love him. He wants you to serve him. And then we become those that find people idle, saying, come on, let's do something. Let's show something. God has given us the opportunity right now, before payday, right now, to share and show his glory to a lost and dying world. We share his glory. And I don't think there could be any greater honor and privilege than that. When I think back on my life, I like to think I'm strong and I could have done things on my own. And But I have to be honest. There are some things I don't believe I could have made it through if I didn't have Jesus if I didn't have the love of Jesus. There are some situations that were so heavy that I don't think I could have made it had I not known the love of Jesus. I want to, I want to open it up now. And just, you know, we usually do this. I've never done this online, but, you know, I see people Tapping in. Uh, Christina, it's good to see you with Leanne. It's good to see you. You know, I'm glad you had your busy season. And it just, just it blesses my heart to see those little hearts popping up on the side of the screen. And, and uh, I'm here at home. But I did, I was not going to take this Wednesday off and just sit around and watch something on, I uh, watch something on America's Funniest Videos or on Netflix or something. I wanted to be able to give God some glory tonight. And so I I welcome you into my room. And uh, I do it because I love you. Wadali's good to see you. Nancy, good to see you. God bless you. You know, thank you for all of your faithfulness. We're talking about having a devotional life. Guys and girls, ladies and gentlemen, brothers and sisters, you want to pick a portion of scripture 
if you want to, I'll help. It'll be my honor. I have like 55 chapters that I think every believer ought to know. Now listen, I'm not saying, oh, Pastor Joe only believes. No, I believe there's so many more that we should be doing. But I have at least 55 in the Old Testament and in the New that I think are just paramount. They, it, it is so important that we know them. I believe it's, it's kind of, it threads the story of God together. And so I like it for that reason. And I just want to encourage you, when you have a devotion, hey, man, I'm, look, I'm glad that you're reading a couple of, I'm glad that you're reading a couple of minutes a day. I'm glad if you got a Jesus Calling book, uh, write in it, yeah, you know, but, but just read the word, man. Find yourself a Bible, something in your version, and just say, I absolutely love my Bible, and, and I just, I just, um, I find things in there, and I, I know it's Jesus now because I want to share them. In my natural state, I would stutter. I would stumble. I get so embarrassed and shamed to read in front of people. I don't know who I'm reading in front of now, but I started this with prayer. Even before I turned it on, I, I prayed and I said, God, just touch my heart. I want to let people out there know that, that, that we love them so much too. You know, we, we just absolutely love you. When you have a devotion, Find a quiet place, a quiet corner in your house. Husband or wife, maybe your boyfriend or girlfriend, if you're alone. Get yourself a little notepad and write things down. Like, I want to see the key words. Key words might pop up. A theme. What's the theme of this? What's, what's the topic? What's he trying to say? Um, what's their personal application? What do I find here? What was he trying to tell them in Corinthia or something like that? What was he trying to tell those people? Then what's he trying to tell me? What could I glean from what he was telling them? How could my walk today glorify God from what I'm learning from them? God's word is just a love letter. It's, it's the good and the bad and the ugly of the people of God going through trying to be more godly. And, and I'm not going to sugarcoat that. There, there's some there's some ugly things. There's some bad times. There's some times that King, he should have been out. David, he should have been out at war. And he stayed home looking over his porch to see a Bathsheba. But, you know, but but God shows us even those things and still calls him a man after my own heart, a man after the heart of God, because he knew that once he saw the error of his ways, he ran to Jesus. And we got to start doing that now. Church tonight, I want to know, um, I, I just want to take a few minutes, and if you have a, a question, a little comment, if you could forward it to me, if you could write it to me, I'll, I'll talk about it now, and, and it would be my honor, and I'm glad I did this tonight, because I need to learn to, to just to, uh, to be open to the Lord. And not to be scared of the camera. I'm scared that my one missing tooth will be shown. Or I'm scared that my bald spot will be shown. Or scared that my face is getting a little older. And that is so much vanity. Because what God is worrying about is, am I being glorified in your life, Jimmy? Are people finding Jesus loving? Are people finding the love of God? Thank God for those that get saved. At 11.59. Thank you God. Give them the wage. Give them salvation. But thank you Lord. For those that have been plowing. I think of Sister Ruthie. Think of Pastor Ray Hernandez. That have been plowing for years. Pushing for years. For years. And theirs will be the same. Salvation in the kingdom of God. But the stories they could tell you. If they could sit you down. Sit with an old head and let them tell you stories about how they got there, the journey through. Then tell them to be honest and tell you what the journey might have looked like had they not known Jesus or had his presence with them. At least I saw you. Is there anybody who has maybe a little question or a comment 
I'll read it out loud. I'm just going to take about two minutes, and then we're 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 done for the night. Hi, Jen. Good to see you, uh, Christina, Madeline, and Hector Ramos. I, always good to see you guys. You have a uh, you guys have a soccer team. Oh, all those teams you bring in, all your kids are growing so beautiful. God bless you. I'm praying for you. Is there anybody's got a question or a thought? Uh, uh, maybe how did you see it? You know, um, you know. Some people say, well. Um, Amen. I, I'm, I'm sorry. If I seem like I'm pausing, I'm reading something from somebody. I'm... Oh, man. I've got somebody, Layla, saying I'm having private time praying and worshiping God every morning. I'm sorry. I don't know if I should have said that, but just just thank you. Man, nothing like worshiping God. Oh, can you imagine? God can hear the greatest worship from his angels. They, they sing way better than us. But there's something about us singing to him saying oh lord jesus here i am again lord here i am again please be with me god be with me lord be with me today in everything i do in everything i say let it be done to give you glory you know um i see you lisa thank you lord for his presence isn't that something yeah you know it's 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 uh the point of what the guys that come in at eleven fifty nine are missing is they're missing his presence throughout life's journey. And that's why I think it'll be a little sweeter for those of us that know, like, thank you, Lord. I ran the race. I walked the walk. I talked the talk. I kept the faith. And I came into the finish line. I didn't quit at the end. Thank you. Thank you, Lisa. Good to see you. And Lewis, and little Lewis, thank you. Praise God. Is there anyone that's got maybe a thought or something that you just like me to uh, make a little shout out, you know, over the air or something, a uh, praise testimony? I think I told you that uh, Kinsley is coming out. Uh, uh, please pray. Our uh, The triplets have all been sick. Our noses have all been running. Uh, my throat has been sore. But, but you know, these colds come and go. And they don't stay and they don't kill you at least not yet you know so so we go on praising the lord and and lifting him up let me read this to you the final verse that he has there my bible is big enough i can read it and not use my glasses this time he says in verse 15 in verse 15 and 16 of the book of matthew chapter 20 he says am i not allowed to do what I choose with what belongs to me. Hmm. Or do you begrudge my generosity? Are you mad that I'm gracious and generous to everyone equally? Is that incredible? Do you begrudge me? So the last will be first and the first will be last. I think the first in this context, our last, because we've been living it. We know the prize up front. Those that come in last are probably at their last moment, at their last hour. Thank you for them. Thank you for them. I don't mind people getting saved at the last hour. I don't mind it. Only people who think they're missing, like, well, I've given up this, I've given up liquor, I've given up dancing, I've given up partying, I've given up this so I could be a Christian. You've given up. Guess what? How about changing that around saying, I've gotten Jesus, I've had Jesus, I've walked with Jesus, my family disputes have been settled with Jesus, I've read Jesus, we sing songs about Jesus, my life has been lifted up and I've learned more because of Jesus. My personal reading and writing skills, my comprehension skills, and my verbosity, my my ability to know words and speak them well, were not good at all until I began to be a child of God and, and just I had to be a child of God and read His Word and study. And that's what made me hungry to find out what do words mean. And, and thank you, Edwurma. It's never too late to come to Jesus he loves all of his little children. He loves, it's never too late. So for tonight, I just want to uh, 
shared that on Wednesday nights at City Limits Assembly of God, we've been having a new kind of a Wednesday night service. We sing a few songs, and uh, we certainly pray for things and, and uh, pray for people's needs and something. Oh, Cody, it's good to see you. It's good to see you. Please say hello to your family and all. And um, then we, then we uh, right from worship, we break into tables. Just uh, We set up like six, seven, eight tables and just circle them with nice, comfortable chairs. And I'll usually bring in a note, a uh, little notepad that's got blanks on it, but it'll have uh, the agenda, topic, the theme, uh, keywords. You know, there might be words that you see keywords just to make you think, just to start your memory, start that memory going. It's like I would say uh, priming the pump. You put a little water in and then you start to pump it. And um, so I want you to feel free to come if you come to City Limits on a Wednesday. If you have not been coming uh, on a Wednesday night, uh, please start coming. You know, um, if and when uh, we can afford a camera, we'll maybe start doing the uh, doing a little video clippings of the live feed in the back as well as the Sunday morning front. But if you want to, please come and uh, bring a paper, notebook, and bring your favorite Bible, and let's get to learning God's Word and living God's Word. I live it, I love it, and share it. That's my theme. That's the theme of my heart. Um, let me pray with you tonight. I would ask you right now, um, I don't know if I see your notes and quotes or if everybody does. So if you have a, 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 a personal prayer need, could you please put it down? We love you, Pastor. Thank God for you. And for having, oh, man, I thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. That uh, That's what I want to do. Wurma, Wurma's on my board, and, and she says it's a great way of us all coming together and learning. That's what I want to do. I don't want to be like those people to say, I'm a sensei, you know. I teach you, but never everything I know. No, that's not the way I am at all. I teach you whatever I know. If God downloads it to me, the Holy Spirit, I'm going to give it right to you, and God will just have to give me more. I never want to act like I'm smarter than you. I want to act like we're growing together. Growing together. So, um, thank you, Abadalis. I know that we gained so much from God, you know, praying for uh, Jacob. Thank you, Lord. Uh, could you tell me if there's any prayer request, if you could just punch them up right now, uh, you know, a single word or whatever. It would be my honor to pray with those of you that are watching. It would be, it, it would just be an honor. Uh, praying for Jacob, I got that again. I'll be praying for him. I'll mention that uh, for tonight. And is there anyone else that, uh, that has that has a prayer need for your marriage, family, finances. Um, do me a favor. Do not try to be a hero in this weather. You know, call somebody that's got a 4x4 four four if you need something. If you need something and I'm nearby, you call me. I have a Jeep, a 4x4. Four four. It won't get stuck in anything, and, 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 and I'll come out. If anybody needs their milk or their medicine or anything like that, would you please call you can call my house call me call debbie i know that you have a, one of our phone numbers and and we it'll be our honor to help you out okay but don't you go try to venture out there on your own and and get stuck okay and um amen anybody else have a prayer request oh one thing i forgot here are you ready um i put my head down for a moment because I, I'm i just going to share it with you. You know, today is Wednesday. It's Bible study day. And today, our sister Wurma, she would usually say it's time to receive the Lord's tithe and offering. If you've been blessed and you know the textable number, that's the, that's the online giving. It's a one-time giving. And... Um, if you would please text in your tithe and offering, that would be so great and help this church to continue on to do all the projects and all the things that we are looking for. Now I see somebody saying, please pray for my hubby's on the road. Oh, Jose's on the road. 
please pray for him. It's uh, I know that he drives those trucks and stuff. And um, and let's pray for each Jennifer's family, her brothers, sisters, the kids, all of them. Pray for my family, for my children. You know, I I love them so much, and um, just. You know, they need prayer. They need the direction of the Lord. Not our correction and our anger. They need the direction of the Lord. So let's pray that the Holy Spirit will come to them. By the way, uh, Jennifer just told me that the textable number for online giving, it's a one-time giving, you give it, and it will always ask you ask you again. It won't even come back and ask you. You'll have to go on and give it. It's 484 357 one two one zero four eight four three five seven one two one zero. That's our textable online giving for City Limits Assembly of God. I'll say it one more time for you in case you need to punch it into your phone number or something. Four eight four three five seven twelve ten. Twelve ten. Four eight four three five seven twelve ten. And uh, thank you for your giving. Thank you for your kindness. Let me just take a moment now and and pray us out. Please pray for my throat. I'm getting kind of hoarse, hoarse but uh, it was fun doing this. If you really appreciated this, could you go online and put something and just, just put that it was okay? I just, I was so self-conscious. I thought, let me see my big nose or my cheeks or whatever. And I just thought, you know, I have to praise the Lord with my people and I don't care about that whole looks thing just praise the lord you know so i'm gonna pray now i'll give you a i'll give you like 10 15 seconds if you have a special prayer request thank you for all the little hearts i see them popping up all over the place that 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 makes me feel so good glory to god glory to god father in heaven we come before you as we close this night out of Bible study and I thank you for the technology that made it makes it available I pray that it would never be a substitution for coming together as children of God and so I pray for the husbands for the wives Madeline and for Hector for Jennifer and for Daniel for Jose and for Layla, for me, Jimmy, and for Debbie, for Timothy and Nikita. I pray for each one of them, Lord, for all of them, for Hal and for Jackie, for Freddie and Christina, Lord. We pray that you would be with them, God, and just bless them, Lord God. Lead them to a place where you are the Lord and Savior of their life, where nothing else matters, where the only thing that matters is is that God is glorified and that God is in charge. And Father, I pray that you would keep our flocks safe, keep them safe tonight, and get them ready. Get them ready for Sunday, Lord God, where, where I know that you have a, a, a message. I don't want to spill the beans now, but you've placed a powerful message on my heart. Please invite a friend. By the way, if you didn't know it, this Sunday is the 25-year anniversary of City Limits Assembly of God. 25 years. Now, we've been here 26, but started the church 25. It's been 25 years old. It's still a baby. And so I invite a friend. Invite somebody who hasn't come in a while or something. Invite them and let's see what the Lord does. Thank you so much. Father, thank you, Lord. For your children, for all those that have watched me this, this, this time, I pray that they would read Matthew chapter 20 verses 1 through 16 again and again and see what they glean personally. Give them a night to pray tonight. It, just, just get on your knees if you can and just pray and say, Father, bless this evening. Give me good dreams. Give them a good sleep. Give them a good rest, Lord. Protect their children, protect their family, their husbands and their wives and their children and their grandchildren, Lord, and their great-grandchildren. Keep them safe, Lord, and bless them with the power of your Holy Spirit. We ask all these things in the name of the Father, in the name of the Father, 
by the power of the Son and the anointing of the Holy Spirit. Amen. God bless you guys. Pastor Jim out. Okay. Um, I hope I did okay for my first time. Bye-bye. God bless you.